This is the project helps video for Word Capstone Project 2. Let's go ahead and begin by talking about some of the document layout features that you're going to have to apply in your project, uh, such as a custom margin. If you go to the layout tab here at the top, and in the page setup group, you have the margins group. Now you have some of these predefined settings here, but this project is going to ask you to come up with custom margins. So we'll go ahead and click custom margins. From here, you have the option. If I have a lot of stuff on a piece of paper I need to print out, sometimes I'll change the top, bottom, and left and right margin to 2.25. It gets it pretty close to the edge, usually without any problems from the printer. So we'll go ahead and click OK. And notice how the margins have changed on my document. We'll go ahead and undo that just so that we can continue working through this project. You're going to be asked to insert different page breaks within this document. So let's go ahead and, and look at doing that. Now, I would encourage you to go to the Home tab and show the paragraph marks here so that you can see the paragraph markings within this document. These little backwards P's are just returns in your document. And these are bullets. You have the tab here. But I'm going to go ahead and, and put in a page break, and you'll see how Word will show you what's going on. There's a few ways to do this. You could go to uh, Layout, and then here in the Page Setup group, Let's go ahead and do a, a, con, a column for this. And notice I went ahead and pushed it down. Now it shows here that there's a column break. And if I didn't have that marking, you wouldn't know that that's why everything got pushed down in the document. Now that we've gone ahead and inserted a break, there's going to be a few different breaks. So make sure you're familiar with the breaks here. And then what we want to do is look at columns. You're going to be asked to change some of the text here to columns. And you have predefined settings, 2, 3, left, right. And then you have more columns. You're going to be asked to give uh, column-specific width and spacing. So you want to be careful um, what you select here. We're going to click OK. And notice it went ahead and changed the document. Let's go ahead and insert a watermark into this document. And we've done this in previous projects, but we're going to go to the Design tab here at the top. What we want in the page background group is to select a watermark. Now, you have a lot of predefined ones, but you can also do a custom watermark, which we'll do here. Uh, we'll go ahead and select our picture. And for this project, if it gives you one, you're going to want to make sure that if you clicked it, it's automatically going to save to your downloads unless you moved it. We'll go ahead and use our Mariner logo for this. And we'll unwash it out. And I went ahead and placed that Mariner logo within our document in the back. Now, you can also remove it, so we'll click the drop down here, and then you have remove watermark. Maybe uh, that's not really what you want at the end of the day. So we'll go ahead and click remove, and notice it went ahead and disappeared. A feature in Word that can kind of get lost within the program is the auto hyphenation, and you're going to be asked to do this in this project, and you can possibly see it on the certification test, and it's just kind of tucked away. It's on the layout tab, it's in the page setup group, and then we have hyphenation here and we have none, automatic, and manual. We're going to go ahead and set this to automatic. And notice our, our document changed, and it's hyphenating words here in the document. Let's talk about different alignments for text. So the most standard, we'll go ahead and select this text. The most standard is just the align left, but you also have a center align, a right align, and then one that's often forgotten is the justify text. And so we'll go ahead and do that. What it does is just evenly spaces. You're also going to be asked to go ahead and select a style or choose text with that has a style here. And you're going to be asked to change maybe the size, the font, maybe the color. So we'll go ahead and do that. And then what it's going to want you to do is to update the style that you're using based upon the changes that you made. So we'll go ahead and click Update Heading 1 to match. Let's look at adding a drop cap to the text here. So let's go ahead and put our cursor here for any one. And what we're going to do is go to the Insert tab here at the top. And in our text group, we have the drop cap. You have a couple of them. It'll tell you which one it wants you to do. Notice that how the A floats all the way to the left. What you're probably going to do is the drop cap. And then if you need to change the color, the size, any of those things, you want to make sure you highlight the letter that you're going to change the color or size to. If you just have it here, it's not going to change. Let's go ahead and insert Word Art into this document. We'll go to some area where we have space. We'll go to the Insert tab. We'll go to Word Art. 
And if let's go ahead and insert word art into our document here. I'm going to have to make sure I put my cursor here. So when I insert it, it puts down at the bottom. We're going to go to the Insert tab. We're going to go to Word Art. And we'll go ahead and select this one, which is a fill orange. If you're not sure on the project, it'll tell you which one. If you're not sure what you're about to select, make sure you just hover over the style for a second, and it will tell you what it's called. So we'll go ahead and just type in some text. And you're going to be asked to do quite a few things with this, such as weigh its position within the document. Right now it's just in front of the text, but you might be asked to do square or maybe tight which you can't really see here, so let me move up. So you can see how it's tight now near the text, or top and bottom. Notice that when I head in, it now populates text above and below. But let's go ahead and look at some of the color to this. So with this SmartArt selected, I have the Drawing Tools Format tab here at the top. And what we're going to do is, is add a gradient to this SmartArt. And so let's go here to the Word Art Styles, Text Fill, and then what we're going to look at is gradient here. And then I want to select more gradient, which is going to pop out this section over here. We'll go ahead and click gradient fill here. In the beginning, it has our first stop here. Make sure you have that selected. It should by, by default. What you want to do, you can change the color here. The color it tells you in the project. You want to make sure that you hover over the colors to make sure you're selecting the correct color. And then it's actually going to have you do another stop and so it'll say like second or third stop this is our second stop here and then we can change that color as well maybe we like this blue and notice it's making those updates here it might ask you also in this project to change the text outline and so you have color you have different things that you can do you have transparency with dash type make sure that you're familiar with these text options with our SmartArt selected, let's go to the Drawing Tools Format tab here at the top. And something else you want to be familiar with is the text effects. And there's a lot in here, shadow, reflection, glow, uh, bevel, transform is a big one. I want you to know about this because in your project, you're going to have to apply something to the word art here. And it will tell you which of these groupings it will be. But then you're going if it's this one, a warp, inflate, bottom, you're going to have to dig through that list to try and figure out which text effect it wants you to apply. Something it's going to ask you to do is to put a box border around text. And so for this project, it's a little bit different. It's going to have you not only select a heading style, and it's going to ask you to select the text below. And what we want to do is go to the Design tab here at the top. We want to go to Page Borders, and we'll go to Border, we'll select the box, you might need to change the styles. We'll go ahead and just add a color. We'll change the width of the line. And it's going to have you add shading as well. So we'll go ahead and add that yellow. We'll go click OK. Notice it went ahead and did that. Now something else it's going to ask you to do is to create a style based upon this. So we'll go ahead and click the Home tab. And we have all of this still selected. And what we want to do is click the More drop down box here in Styles. And click Create a Style. We'll just go ahead and call this new. And if you really want to see what's going on, if you click modify, you'll kind of really get to see it a little bit more down here in the presentation here. We'll click OK. And now that we've done that, it's gone ahead and it's jumped text, but you're going to be required to go ahead and apply that somewhere else. So we can go ahead and click this. And notice it went ahead and it was able to apply that style to the text we selected. You're also going to be asked to condense or expand text. So we'll go ahead and select our heading here. And what we want to do is go to, on the Home tab, the Font Group dialog box, Advanced. And this is the default settings, but you have Expanded and Condensed. And so uh, if we click Up, it'll show us how it... Notice it went ahead and spread the letters out. Something else you're going to be asked to do is insert a hyperlink. So let's go ahead and just select this word right here. We're on the Insert tab. What we want to do is go to the Links group, and we'll go ahead and click Link here. Now, you can do it within your your uh, file, with, within this document, create a new document, or an email address. Let's look at an email address. 
I believe that's what you're going to do in the project. You should be f fairly familiar with this text to display. It's going to give you that. It's going to give you the email address, the subject, and then it's also going to ask you to do a screen tip. All right, let's look at editing this photo here, the Mariner logo. When I select that, of course, I get the Picture Tools Format tab here at the top. And now it's going to ask you to do a few things, such as flip the picture. Maybe it's horizontal, maybe it's vertical, maybe it's just 90 degrees. You also have more rotation options. So make sure you're familiar with that. You want to be familiar with things like alt text. You have picture styles here, which you've done a lot with in Gmetrics and other projects. You have the colors, the artistic effects. Just make sure you're familiar with the different settings here at the top. Let's talk about inserting text from file, which you should be fairly familiar with with Geometrics projects and the projects you've done with the textbook. But we'll go to the Insert tab here at the top. What we want to do is go to the Text Group, Object Dropdown, Text from File. And what I want you to see is right now the file that I need is not listed out, and it's because all Word documents are selected here. If I click All Files, notice it has, goes ahead and it shows me this text file here. Let me just double click that, and it went ahead and it inserted it for me. So you just want to make sure you select All Files if you don't see the file that you need. In the project, you're going to be asked to modify a tab stop. So up here in the top of our document, we have my name, we have the project that we're working on, and it's already going to be set in the document. If you look here at the top, we have a ruler. If you do not see your ruler, you want to go to the View tab here at the top and click this checkbox next to Ruler to display the ruler. It will make your life a lot easier for this. And what we want to do is just, what they're going to have you do is just modify this left tab stop. And all you got to do is click and drag to wherever it tells you. So if it goes says 3 to 4, all you need to do is drag it, and it will reset the tab stop for you. In this file, you're going to be dealing with tables, and one of the first things it's going to ask you to do is to go ahead and convert text like this to a table. And so what we want to do is just go ahead and select our data. Now, you want to be careful. If you look here at the bottom, I selected too much, and if you do that, if you have that selected, when you go to create the table, it's going to give you the wrong columns or rows. So you just want to select what you need for this project, which is this. We're going to go to the Insert tab here at the top in the Tables group, the Tables drop-down. And what you want to do is select Convert Text to Table. You're, it'll tell you the number of columns and rows that you need. And some of the, the features here, like Auto Fit to Contents, Auto Fit to Window, you might need to do that. But if you miss this step, it's OK. Because with this table still selected, we talked about those Auto Fit. We still have those. You can do Window, you can do Column Width, or you can do Auto Fit Contents. All of that's still an option for you after you create your table. Let's talk about merging cells. So right here, if I wanted to go ahead and make this one long cell here in this row, if I select each of those cells and I go to the Merge group and select Merge Cells, I went ahead and made that cell one. Now, I don't need this for this table, so I'm actually going to go ahead and select it. And what I want to do is delete this row. So I'm going to right-click, and there are a few ways you can do this. And I can click Delete Rows. Notice it went ahead and made that disappear. I also don't need this column here. Now, columns run up and down. Rows run left to right. And go ahead and select this column. And then I'm going to go ahead and right-click again. And this time I'm going to click Delete Columns. You can also do it from here, just Delete Columns. And it will make that disappear. Let's go ahead and add the total number of students for these high schools here. So I'm going to put my cursor in the empty cell. And because we have, we're in the table, we have the table tools layout. We want to click the formula button. And it assumes the sum, which is correct. We'll go ahead and click OK. And notice I went ahead and populated that number for me. You also want to be familiar with column uh, height and width. And so you can select individual columns or the whole table. And you can change manually the height and the width. You also want to be familiar with changing the table styles and shading. So maybe we wanted this green, or maybe you wanted to select a predefined style. So you have your ear headings, grid tables. So anything in here is a grid table. You have list tables. If you're not sure what you're about to select based upon what is um, in the project, make sure you hover for the name.